Hello YouTube and welcome back to another 3D ROS tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you how you can quickly up the quality of your renders in very little time in Unreal Engine. So let's just dive right in and I'll start with the one that I think has the biggest difference in the quality of your renders. So it can take you from an image like this to an image like this straight away with the same resolution and I'll show you how. So the first technique is through screen space scaling. So in your viewport bring down the drop down arrow and under screen percentage instead of 100 just whack that up to 200. Now you don't want to go too high because your engine will run super slow. However this is a great way to fake detail in your images extra resolution that is. So basically what it does is it makes the camera see 200% so two times the actual resolution output of your monitor. So although my monitor is 1080p this is going to be in 2k and if it's lagging a bit for you you can bring it down to 150 and that way you can get so much more detail so if I zoom in a bit more as you can see it does slow down the editor quite a lot so you only want to do this for taking your screenshots so let's just save these cherubs over here if I whack this back down to 100 keep an eye on the cherubs over there as you can see it loses a lot of detail especially in the reflections so if we hit it back up to 200 it becomes a lot more sharper and this becomes a lot more noticeable when you render your images out. So if we go back to the camera here and we decide to high resolution render this screenshot now we've also got the screenshot multiplier which you're probably familiar with. Now with this on 200 I'd advise not going above 2 or your editor will crash and in some cases if you've got a large scene or your PC isn't the best it will crash on on 2 with 200 so you might want to just rein things back a bit if that is the case but if we render it out we can render it out 200 with a 1 multiplier so that would render out a 1080p screenshot but you've got the detail and the sharpness of a 2k screenshot but if you whack this up to 2 so we've got 2 times here and 200 here, you're essentially taking a 4K screenshot with a 2K resolution. So the differences I've got rendered out here. So this is just your standard render at 100% scaling and one time screenshot multiplier. And as you can see we don't quite have the sharpness in the image. Now if we do a 2 times multiplier so this is a 2k image and we zoom in as you can see it's a bit sharper a bit nicer if we go back down to one times multiplier so this is just a 1080p screenshot so roughly the same file size as this one as you can see a huge difference and in my personal opinion I think 201 looks better than 102 even though this is essentially a lower resolution image because the camera in Unreal Engine is capturing more detail than this one you get a nice sharper image and you can see a lot more detail. Now if we look at 200% with a 2 times multiplier you can see you get a lot more detail. I can start to see the detail in these flowers and you can just really zoom in and see a lot of that extra detail you couldn't before and the reflections look a lot nicer. So if we just flick through, this is the first one. This is 100 with 2 times multiplier. This is 200% screen reflection with 1 times multiplier. So as you can see that gets a lot sharper and nicer even though it's essentially a lower resolution image. And then the final higher resolution one. You can start to see all of the detail in these rollers where you could not previously. So that is one way to increase the look of your renders in Unreal Engine. 
so the next ones uh, ones you might not really think of and they'll, they'll harbor a bit less extreme results but it's worth looking at as well as for performance so if we go a lit up here and we go down to optimization view modes and go a light map density so this looks crazy so basically as long as you're not clicked on it it'll show you different colors like green red and blue so what these mean is as you can see the checkered pattern it is good to have this checkered pattern roughly the same throughout all of your models in your whole scene I mean I've made this quite extreme just for the example of this tutorial but for example you wouldn't want a lot of light map density on these papers because there's, there's no real reason for that you want the checkered pattern the same as this desk that way it's consistent throughout and you don't get loads of shadow high quality shadow detail in one and then loads of jaggedness in the other it's also just not needed for your render time if it's red I mean you can bump up a little bit don't get me wrong but you want to be aiming for like a green in your overall and you also want to keep it quite consistent as you can see this is red whereas this is green this has got some funky light maps so blue is the worst so you just want to scale that back and just to do that you just select the object say this one's red so this light map density is too high you want to go to lighten override light map resolution and let's just put something like 16 and as you can see that tile gets bigger we click away and now it's green and that'll make it more consistent throughout you'll get a quicker build time it just keeps everything more consistent and looking nicer and of course if you've got items that are blue you want to increase the light map resolution override and that way you'll get a lot, a lot nicer renders so the next one I want to show you is something you definitely don't want to do if you're creating a game as it's going to be very extreme just like the screen space percentage but if you go into settings engine scalability settings this will give you control over like your texture quality your effects your anti-aliasing so when I'm taking screenshots I like to put this on cinematic this gives the best most crisp quality renders but if you're making a game you just want epic or far so epic or high would be acceptable for a game just like in a game you have low medium high and then ultra settings in uh, the new versions of Unreal Engine they've added this cinematic setting and that'll just help make all of these details pop even further so the next tip uh, is world settings and you can just go into here and you can increase the bounces in direct lighting quality things like that but warning this will increase your build times a lot and personally I don't like to change them I like to get better results in real time as much as I can just because I know how how quickly things change in the development process and I don't want to be sitting there waiting for ages for my lighting to build so my final techniques involve the post-processing volume so just some basic adjustments you can go in adjust the shadows highlights color whatever you'd like but something I like to do for standard is go into the rendering features ambient occlusion and under intensity it's defaulted to 1.5 if we look on 1.5 here and I increase this to 0.75 you just get some nice nicer shadow detail baked into the model and I just think that gives an overall better better view I mean you can increase yours to 1 or 0 if you don't like it but I personally like to have a bit of darkness in there so I'm just going to keep mine as 0 0.75 and also you want to bring down the drop down and make sure the quality is on 100 instead of 50 and that'll just really help bring the quality and reduce the graininess in your ambient occlusion. So now the final thing 
is you can also change the screen space reflections. So if we go into screen space reflections, intensity 100, quality, defaulted at 50. And if you work that up to 100, you get a lot nicer reflections in your models. And it really just helps it pop and it gives that extra quality detail. One more thing I'd like to add on before you like and subscribe is the importance of lighting. So if I just reduce this down a bit more just so we move around. As you can see I've got this lighting set up here. We've got some point lights here and we also have this HDRI. So HDRI images let you extract the lighting from an image like this. So the bright part of the image will cast a light and make the scene brighter wherever that's shining and darker where the image is darker. And this is a template that I got off ArtStation, uh, the Pro Lighting Kit by Scott Knapp. And I, I highly recommend this template. It comes with a host of different levels that you can try out, different lighting scenarios. So as you can see in this one, it's got a multi kind of colored effect. This is a white one and it comes with just a whole host of different HDRIs which I'd highly recommend that you check out. Uh, the link for that will be in the description. And uh, honestly it's a great environment to render out your objects and assets. And uh, I, I would highly recommend it but as I said it's not required. Uh, just follow the techniques I did in this tutorial and you can get great looking images but it's an extra that you're looking at adding on. So yeah, hopefully you can implement some of these techniques into your work and I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give this video a like, maybe share it with somebody and consider subscribing, it's free. And ring that notification bell to get notified on my next video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.